from NBC News, this is Today with Katie Curry and Matt Lauer, live from Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza. And good morning. Welcome to Today on a Tuesday morning. I'm Matt Lauer. And I'm Ann Curry. And for Katie this morning, good morning, everybody. A four-count indictment accuses a Somali... Low-carb, high-fat South Beach Americans are increasingly obsessed with losing weight, while doctors and authors fight over the best way to do it. Now, one of them is calling for a truce. Dr. Dean Ornish makes that proposal in this week's Time magazine. He is the director of the Preventative, rather, the Preventive Medicine Research Institute and also the author of Eat More, Weigh Less. Dr. Dean Ornish, good morning. Good morning, and Good to talk to you. Good again. to talk Although to you. Although it's as kind well. of early here. Oh, I imagine. I don't know if it's watching. early or late. <laughs> it's 1:45 well, I think it's in the extremely morning. early. But it would thank you for getting up early <laughs> to talk to us, Doctor. America is overweight and struggling, weighing the uh, the, po the positives and negatives of the Atkins, the South Beach, the Zone, the Hamptons, even the Subway diets. A lot of food for thought. A lot. Of, it's really a food fight, Doctor. Why are you calling for a truce? Well, I think people are tired of the bickering, they're tired of the arguing, and it leaves people saying, you know, these doctors, they can't make up their minds, to heck with them, just bring out the bacon and eggs and eat whatever you want. In fact, there's actually a convergence of ideas, and while there are still significant points of difference, there's a lot more in common than people realize, and I thought it might be helpful to let people know what those things are so that people can begin to make changes that can really help them. A, a lot of what's driving this, though, doctor, is this low-carb craze, and you think Americans need to know the, the difference between good and bad carbs. Explain it in, yes. in layman's terms. Well, you know, I debated Dr. Atkins many times before he died, and he was right in that Americans do eat too many simple carbs. They're things like sugar, white flour, white rice, sometimes called refined carbs. When you eat a lot of these, you get a double whammy. You get all these calories that don't fill you up because you've removed the fiber and the bran, and they get absorbed quickly, so they make your blood sugar zoom up. Your body makes insulin to bring it back down, which is good, but the insulin causes you to convert those calories into fat. Mm -hmm. Where we differed is that you don't then go to pork rinds and bacon and sausage, those are not health foods, but rather to good carbs. Fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, in their natural forms are rich in fiber, and the fiber fills you up before you get too many calories, and it slows the absorption so you don't get those blood sugar spikes. Okay, so that said, let's take a look at the things you say that most nutritionists and doctors agree on. Avoid bad fats, consume good fats every day, eat fewer bad carbs, eat more good carbs. Give me an example of good carbs. Legumes, what else? Fruits, vegetables, whole grains, unrefined carbs, these are rich in fiber, and there are at least a thousand substances that are protective, that have anti-cancer, anti-heart disease, even anti-aging properties. And where do you find them? With few exceptions, you find them in fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and beans. You, also you want to avoid the bad fats as well. You mentioned bad fats, for example, like the trans fatty acids, and these are things sometimes called partially hydrogenated. They increase the shelf life of the products, which is why manufacturers use them, but they decrease the shelf life of the people who eat them, so you should avoid them. You also say count calories. Also remember what you include in diet is as important as what you exclude. For example? Well, the fruits and vegetables have these protective substances, which is what makes them so good. And the other thing, it's not just the amount of food. You can lose weight on any diet if you just restrict the amount of food, but you get hungry. If you change the type of food, in other words, eat less fat, you can eat the same amount of food but still get fewer calories because fat has nine calories per gram and protein and carbs have only four. So when you eat less fat, you eat fewer calories without having to eat less food. So you it's not low carb versus low fat. You want to eat less of the bad carbs and less fat as well, you more say, of the good carbs. You say lose weight in a healthy way, balance your energy, also exercise more and eat less red meat. Now, wait a minute. This is the major point of contention. <laughs> about uh, It's about red meat. What do you say to people who have successfully lost weight on one of these diets in which they're eating a lot of red meat, a lot of protein, and a lot of fat? Well, you can lose weight on, on, on those kinds of diets, but you may do so at the risk of mortgaging your health. You can lose weight on amphetamines. You can smoke cigarettes. You can take fen, -fen. There are lots of ways of losing weight that aren't good for you. But even the Atkins people are saying that they're, they're de-emphasizing the, the red meat and moving more in that direction. I think they have a lot farther to go. That's one area that we still disagree upon. The reason that people lose weight when they, when they go on those diets is that Americans eat way too many simple carbs. So if you eat fewer of them, you're going to lose weight. But you can lose even more weight by eating fewer simple carbs and less fat 
and more fruits and vegetables. I think that's where the consensus is coming to. You actually make the argument that eating more red meat can actually increase your risks of getting cancer, mm -hmm. which I think is sobering to a lot of people and perhaps one of the reasons why people are starting to think a little differently about that. Is that right? Well, it can increase the risk of breast, prostate, colon cancer, and also heart disease. The one study of the Atkins diet that actually looked at what happens to the heart found that it actually worsen blood flow to the heart. So I think that's why most people who are writing in this area, most researchers like myself are saying, it's better to the degree that you can avoid red meat, you're gonna be healthy and you're gonna feel better. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing that I think we all agree on is that it's not all or nothing. You have a spectrum of choices. To the degree that you eat less red meat, more fruits and vegetables, fewer of the bad carbs, more of the good carbs, you're gonna lose weight, feel better, and, and improve your well-being. You're going to feel a lot better as well. Well, Dr. Dean Ornish, I'm not sure you actually ended the diet wars this morning, but certainly <laughs> perhaps you <laughs> began that process. Thank you for joining us. And go back to sleep. My pleasure. <laughs> and there's more information on this topic on our website at today.msnbc.com. And coming up next, from a diet truce to the Da Vinci we diet, we're going to fill you in on one bakery owner's response to, to the low-carb craze. But first, these messages. It's not the barley or the...